How much ad revenue money do you think CTR, Pokey, Revly, and Heart make opening booster packs on YouTube? A lot of you might say hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, some people might even say millions of dollars. In reality, as far as YouTube ad revenue goes, if they open anything remotely interesting, black and white era, anything vintage, they're actually losing hundreds if not thousands of dollars every single video. As always, we're gonna do a credibility check so you know I'm not talking out my ass. This is the back end of my uh, YouTube studio. You can see in the past 30 days, I made like three grand on YouTube ad revenue. I've gotten 332,000 views. Uh, we're up to like 28,000 subscribers now. So I am credible. I do know a thing or two about YouTube ad revenue. This is not my first monetized channel. And as far as like business stuff goes, I own pokeyanny.com. We did seven figures of sales every year. Here's some sales numbers. I'm, I'm credible on this topic. Let's, let's move on. If they're opening modern product, Surging Sparks, for example, if it's a good video, they might break even, maybe they'll make a hundred bucks or so, but there is actually no money in YouTube ad revenue when it comes to opening packs. Now, quick disclaimer, these folks make a lot of money on YouTube, but it's not how you think. And the reason I'm making this video today is because there's a lot of folks emailing me and DMing me saying, hey, I want to start a YouTube pack channel. I want to open packs like Pokey Rev and make a bunch of money. Can you give me a good deal? And this video is for you. Now to the ignorant people already commenting below, please hold your comments because we're gonna go over the numbers and I'm gonna show you exactly how I got to this conclusion. Now we can't have this discussion without talking about CPM, RPM, and monetizable views. So we're gonna start there and then we'll actually look at Cool Trainer Ryan's channel, Pokey Ref's channel, and I'll give you the tools needed to calculate what they're making via ad revenue and how you can extrapolate that for your own use. So let's start with uh, CPM and RPM. This is the back end of one of my videos about uh, Japanese distributors wanting to sell English Pokemon cards in Japan. So it's very Pokemon centric, but it's also got a little bit of a business theme and we're gonna get to why that's significant. So this right here is CPM, that's cost per milli, milli meaning thousand in this case, not million. So every time an advertiser wants to put an ad on my video, it costs them $16.85 for every thousand people that see the ad. I don't choose the advertisers and the advertisers typically don't choose me specifically. It's usually something that YouTube designs based on the advertisers uh, needs. So on a video about Pokemon, for example, Pokemon in YouTube's eyes is a toy. So ads pertaining to toys will oftentimes show up in Pokemon videos. You might also see ads on Pokemon videos for, you know, streaming selling platforms like Drip and whatnot and eBay and Fanatics. You might see those ads. You might see ads for uh, Wix and Shopify. You might see political ads in this time, in this day and age. There's a lot of ads you might see. Comment below what ad you saw when you watched this video because it's interesting. But for the most part, if you're talking about something like a toy, you're only opening booster packs, your CPM cost for advertisers to throw an ad up is going to be relatively low. The reason for that is advertisers want to get in front of an audience that has money. If you're making like finance content, I'm talking Gary Vaynerchuk, Graham Stephan, one of those like business guru type channels, advertisers have a heyday with those channels because those type of people, the business guru content viewers, they're usually willing to spend money on courses and essentially waste their money trying to get rich. So a lot of advertisers that have courses are gonna throw their ads on those type of channels. So unlike my CPM of $16 here, Graham Stephan's CPM is probably closer to 25 to 40, depending on the video. Other big categories include health and beauty, like expensive makeup. If you have a car centric channel, for example, like uh, you know, Marquez Brownlee, when he does a Tesla review, car manufacturers pay a lot of money to show up in a pre-roll or mid-roll ad on that Marquez Brownlee video. You know, if it's a Tesla review, Chevy's Spark or whatever, they might want to advertise on that video. So they're going to pay 40 to $60 per thousand views. So it really depends on the category. And again, I'm, I'm, we're, we're going to get there. I promise. Just hang with me. For most Pokemon content creators like Leonhart, like PokeRev, like CTR, they're not talking business. So their CPM is going to be the lowest of the low because they're talking about toys. Now, I'm very lucky because I've curated my content to be business and Pokemon. So on business type videos where I'm only talking about, uh, well, topics like this, for example, my CPM is going to be higher. 
that means the cost advertisers pay to throw an ad on my video will be higher. Thus, I will get a bigger cut and that's RPM and we'll get there. That's revenue per milli. These big YouTubers that do Pokemon only content, they're never going to see a CPM much higher than $16. There's exceptions, but for the most part, that's as good as it's going to get for them. Meaning their RPM is typically going to be in this range between $3.50 and $6 at the very most. It's probably going to be closer to four bucks on average. And this RPM, this is a number that a lot of folks don't, um, for whatever reason, people only talk CPM and CPM for 99% of people is irrelevant unless you're an advertiser. RPM is the number uh, content creators should be caring about and should be talking about because this word here, the R word, revenue. So every thousand views I get on a video, that's the RPM, revenue per milli, I get $4.91. Now this $4.91 is partially derived from what the advertisers pay. It's typically a percentage minus a bunch of ancillary costs that YouTube is relatively hush hush about. But 99.999% of the time, your CPM is always going to be two to three to four times higher than your RPM. So you can usually extrapolate an RPM with relative uh, consistency, just knowing the CPM of something. All you really need to know for the sake of this video is for content involving Pokemon cards, at most your RPM is going to be like five bucks. Now I'll show you guys some of my other videos. Um, so this video is about investing in Paradox Rift. The YouTube algorithm decided it was more Pokemon themed. So they only charged advertisers $14.35 to throw ads on this particular video because the YouTube algorithm looked at it and decided, you know what, this is more Pokemon related than investing related. We're going to charge advertisers quite a bit less and we're going to give Brian an RPM of $4.50. Now, uh, this video, same thing. This is very much a Pokemon centric video. According to YouTube's algo, they're charging advertisers $14. They're giving me less than four per thousand views. Again, this video, um, it's a, just a Ponzi scheme. So Ponzi is a very business oriented term. In this particular video, I talk a lot about business strategy and the YouTube algorithm caught that. So it's going to charge advertisers nearly $17 per thousand views. And it's going to give me a little bit more. I'm making $5.36 per thousand views. And this video here is about prismatic evolutions and the market in the Pokemon world. Again, YouTube sees this as, yeah, it's a little Pokemon, little business. We'll give you $4.88. Now, this one is a good example of the category change. So this video is called Why Entrepreneurship Actually Sucks. Not a whole lot of Pokemon information in this video. Not in the title, not in the thumbnail, not in the description, and not really in the content. YouTube um, transcribes all the words you speak and it reads that and then that's how it decides what category to place your video in typically. So this video is mostly about entrepreneurship. It's not really about Pokemon. So YouTube sees this as a business oriented video. So they're going to charge advertisers $23 per thousand views. I get quite a big cut of that. I get $7.44. So this video made only $36 and you might be going, well, Brian, your, your RPM is so much higher. Why did it only make $36. Well, it's because I only got, there, there's the views. I only got 5,000 views. So it is a balancing act. You know, Pokemon centered videos, my RPM is going to be much lower, but I'm going to get a lot more views and thus make a lot more money. So you kind of have to play the balancing game. For the sake of this video's topic, though, it's all pretty irrelevant because I think by now you can kind of know in, in your head, your little brain, how to math this out. With Pokemon content, conservatively, at the most, $5 RPM, and that's being generous. $5 per thousand views is what the, the content creator is going to get. So we look at, um, you know, Cool Trainer Ryan, for example. We'll look at his channel. He uh, here opens up Surging Sparks. So 100 and say he got it for a good deal. Say he got it for $110. He was good with his pre-order. Okay. Well, he got 14,000 views on a obviously Pokemon-centered video. There's zero chance YouTube's going to categorize this as anything other than Pokemon-centered. $14 times we're being super generous and saying $5 RPM on this. He made $70 on this video. You know, we've got this Greninja collection. I, I don't remember what this cost, I, like 80 bucks or so. So he made 20,000 views, so 20 times five, being generous. $100 he made in ad revenue, theoretically. So he broke even, okay. Um, how about, ooh, how about this? Evolving Skies, bat, Building Battle Stadium. He says it was $200 in the thumbnail there. Okay, well, he lost 100 bucks. Great. 
Um, Charizard UPC, I think that's worth like 150, 160 dollars. He lost a ton of money. Uh, it, all of these basically. This this only cost I think 60 bucks. So you know, 21 times five. He made 40 bucks on this video, ad revenue wise. No creator is above the CPM and RPM. Anyone in any category is going to be treated the same with a few very extreme examples. And I'm talking like Mr. Beast level extreme where advertisers might particularly target his videos specifically. But all of us nobodies, us, you know, anything less than several million subs, we're all getting the same CPM. We're all getting the same RPM. If I took his video and I uploaded it to my channel, the CPM and RPM would be basically the same because day by day it can change a little bit and country by country it can change too, by the way. So keep that in mind, but it's basically the same. Now let's go to PokeRev, who's uh, you know quite a bit bigger than CTR as far as views go, but it doesn't change anything. So you'll notice, at least I've noticed Rev, um, and I don't watch him very often, so this might not be a, a new development, but it, it seems like there's a lot of new products on Rev's channel lately. So Chilling Rain, relatively new, relatively cheap. Say, so, okay, $225. Well, he got 110,000 views times five, $550 minus 225. He profited $325 on that video. That's spectacular. Are you going to get 110,000 views opening Chilling Rain on your channel? No, but he made money on that video. He made money on this video, certainly. He opened up some Surging Sparks. He opened up some more Surging Sparks. Um... You know, we got, uh, I saw Twilight Masquerade on here, Lost Origin, all these modern boxes. PokeRev is probably one of the only YouTubers besides Leon Hart making money on the modern product. Now, all the older stuff, the vintage stuff, the stuff that made PokeRev what PokeRev is, as far as ad revenue goes, that's the, that's the key word, ad revenue wise, he loses hundreds and thousands of dollars every single video. Again, ad revenue wise, keep that in mind, folks. So this uh, box here, this Neo box, twenty-five thousand dollars. He got one hundred and ten, one hundred eleven thousand views times five, five hundred fifty-five dollars ad revenue. He spent twenty-five thousand on the box, you know, theoretically. So he lost twenty-four thousand four hundred forty-five dollars if he bought that box for twenty-five grand with the intention of opening it for the sake of ad revenue. Again, disclaimers. So. Hopefully by now it's clear that buying boxes and packs to open up on your YouTube channel with the intention of making money through ad revenue, I hope that 20 minutes into this video that's very clear that that does not work. That is not a working model. Not a thing. So how do these folks make money? Well, uh, as far as I know, Cool Trainer Ryan, who does not like me by the way, and that's fine, as far as I know, um, he bought a lot of stuff just over the years when Pokemon was pretty cheap. He had distributor access and he went heavy bags into a lot of stuff before it was worth a lot of money. So for years, he opened that stuff because his cost basis was very low. I assume he enjoyed the product. It did get him ad revenue and he already bought the stuff. So essentially it's profit because he already paid for the stuff years ago. So that's kind of how he started. Now, in the past year, despite him um, criticizing the capitalistic nature of YouTube, and he said it several times, he started doing rip and ships where he charges people to open packs. And that's how he makes money now. He does rip and ships, he charges people, and he opens packs on their behalf. PokeRev, believe it or not, same thing. It's just he's not as public about it. A lot of these vintage boxes have been paid for by somebody else, you know, somebody who's a fan of the channel and also has obviously heavy bags. There is a good chance most of the vintage stuff in his videos, I'm not going to say all because I don't know PokeRev. We've never spoke. I have no idea what he's about, what he does, or what his finances are. But most of the vintage stuff, the bougie stuff, there's a buyer involved. He is not buying that stuff for his channel. There, Someone is giving him money for that, which is great, by the way. I love money. I love capitalism. It's fantastic. But by no means is he buying a $25,000 Neo box for the sake of opening it, for the sake of ad revenue. If he did buy this box, he bought it because he intends on grading the cards he pulls and there was some sort of business-centric you know, strategy. It wasn't, it wasn't to get 110,000 views when he knows damn well that's not going to pay for even a single booster pack. 110,000 views isn't going to pay for a booster pack out of that box. And he knows that because he's not stupid. So how does PokeRev make money? Well, like I said, he does sell some of these vintage products and opens it on the buyer's behalf. That's a lot of the stuff I'm imagining. He also has a website. 
you know, his website, he sells a lot of great product, I'm sure. He also has his mystery bags, which I think he probably makes a large amount of revenue on. And, uh, you know, he's got brand deals. He's got affiliate links, prob probably eBay affiliate links. He's got all these other revenue streams, as does Cool Trainer Ryan, as does Leonhart. Leonhart has rare candy and, uh, you know, deals with the Pokemon card company. They make all of them. All of them make ass loads of money on YouTube. Not debating that. They make a ton of money. They make more on YouTube than I will make selling product in my site and YouTube combined for the next 10 years. But they don't make it opening packs. And that's the whole point of this video because there are so many people who think that they're going to do this thing. They're going to they have this dream and they're like, oh, you know, I know it'll take a while to get there, but I'm just going to, you know, every single day I'm going to post. That does not work. Does not work. It's not a thing. It's not possible unless you have other revenue streams. And for most of those revenue streams to work, you already have to be famous. The only reason PokeRev can sell what I imagine is millions of dollars of mystery packs is because he's trustworthy, people like him, and he's got a huge following. Um, up until now, we've talked about YouTube monetization. Now, there are other platforms that you can monetize, of course. TikTok's monetization program has gotten pretty robust in the past year. Um, obviously, there's little exceptions and disclaimers, but for the most part, videos over one minute long can be monetized for up to one whole dollar per thousand views, which is actually insane on a short form um, type of content like YouTube's RPM on short form content is abysmal. It's not even worth talking about unless you're getting millions of views. TikTok, not bad. I know for a fact Dr. Applesauce actually makes a good amount of money on TikTok. Um, just getting, you know, 40,000 views, 50,000, 250,000, like it's a lot of money. Every thousand views getting a dollar roughly. So there's people that open packs on TikTok. Um, a lot of people are going to immediately think of Pat Flynn, aka Deep Pocket Monster. You know, he gets astronomically high amounts of views, like insane views. He invented the whole category of should I open it or should I keep it sealed? And trust me, He's making a lot of ad revenue on those videos on TikTok. In theory, roughly a dollar for every thousand views. Again, there's always disclaimers and exceptions, but roughly that. So if you go to Pat Flynn's TikTok or Deep Pocket Monsters TikTok, you can kind of extrapolate what some of those videos might be generating. Now, the packs he opens are very expensive, though. So keep that in mind. A lot of the packs are vintage and, uh, you know, even even the packs from like 2010, 2015, like th they're very expensive. So if you want to pursue that, you're taking on a lot of risk. If you're going to open a black white pack anyway, like, yeah, you might as well do it on TikTok and try to try to get that sucker monetized. But if you are buying packs specifically with the intention of making money through TikTok ad revenue, there's a very, 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 very good chance you're going to lose money. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you're wondering how to get monetized on TikTok, they seem to change the requirements on all these platforms all the time. I believe it's a 1,000 followers and then 100,000 views in the past 30 days, the past month. So it's not that hard. Uh, once you get to those milestones, you can Google them. It, it's available. You can uh, join the Creator Reward Program. I recently joined. It took like 24 hours to get approved. And within a day, I made $36. So I'm pretty stoked about that. But uh, yeah, just keep in mind, if you want to pursue this field, it's a lot of risk. So that that's the whole point of this video. Now, I know I've always been the poster child of positivity and leaving videos with happy-go-lucky feelings. And we're going to keep that up today, actually, believe it or not. You can make a lot of money on YouTube ad revenue talking about Pokemon. Not opening packs, talking about it. In fact... The videos I make that I put the least amount of effort in as far as editing goes, those videos do the best. Um, just me talking to the camera just like I am right now. This video, and I, I will post uh, on my YouTube community page, I will post how much this video makes probably a week from now. This video is probably going to be classified in the business category, which means YouTube is going to charge advertisers a CPM of roughly 20 to $25. I'm going to get a cut of that, probably around 6 to $8, and it'll probably get 5,000 views, I'd guess. So I'll probably make between like $40 and $60 for this video, and if it gets 10,000 or 20,000 views, pretty solid, you know, we'll see. 
And I'll post those results in my community page and on my IG story for you guys who are curious. But I'm just talking about Pokemon business. I'm not opening packs. I'm not spending money. I'm not risking anything. I turned on the camera and I'm talking. Nostalgianomics, same thing. He talks about Pokemon card investing. He makes a lot of money on ad revenue. And all you have to do to find out how much, you look at people's views, you divide it by 1,000, you multiply it by four to five conservatively if it's a business oriented video multiply it by six to eight conservatively and you kind of know how much they make and you can do this with any content creator all of them it's all public you can basically calculate what any content creator makes on a video with some basic math and a little bit of guessing but you're going to get pretty damn close so if you are a dreamer and you do want to do pokemon youtube content full time Trust me, I'm not saying you can't make it happen. It's just not going to happen by opening packs for ad revenue. That's not possible. But make a channel. Go to Pokey Beach, read the news, talk about your investing plays, talk about what you like, what you don't like. Uh, Opossum Bud's been a fascinating YouTube channel to observe in the past several months. You know, he started with uh, just drama content and uh, calling out scammers and whatnot. You know, typical commentator stuff and he's really expanded out to just talking about stuff he likes stuff that bugs him stuff he's personally interested in some pack openings funnily enough and uh he just talks to the camera half the time i i bet he doesn't have a script i bet he doesn't prepare at all i bet he doesn't do any editing i think he just talks just like i do and he probably makes pretty good money doing it you want to know how much look at his views divide it by a thousand times it by five it's all public. That's why I'm not afraid to show it because you can figure it out anyway. For the record, if you guys are wondering, my best performing video was that one with like 360,000 views. And the C the RPM was like roughly $3.66-ish. It made $1,500 if anyone's wondering. And then I think my best RPM video, it was like, it was a video similar to this. It was just strictly business talk. My RPM was $20. The CPM was like 45 or it was something outrageous. The highest CPM I've ever heard about was, I believe it was a Graham Stephan video and the CPM was 80 something dollars. And it was, I think it might've been his video about his Tesla. He did like a Tesla finance video. So it had a little bit of finance and a little bit of uh, car manufacturing in it. So the CPM's just going to be high right there. So for all my international viewers, CPM and RPM are going to vary per country. It's going to vary per time of day you upload. It's going to vary on a lot of things. There are infinite factors that will change your CPM and RPM. You could upload the same exact video one day apart from each other. It's going to be a little bit different. The numbers I gave are generalities, and for all intents and purposes, they are as accurate as they need to be, at least to establish the point of don't buy stuff with the intention of making money opening it. That's the whole point. If you liked this video, buy my stuff, pokeyany.com. Subscribe for more business talk and Pokemon talk in general. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments.